Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, I love my Toyota 4Runner mainly because it's so rugged, it's off-road capable, and it's uh, built like a tank. In fact, it's perhaps one of the best manufactured car in the world. But do you know exactly how the 4Runner is built? Let me show you how. Welcome back. So I'm going to explain to you exactly how Toyota 4Runner is manufactured and produced in Japan, and which will also explain to you why this thing is so well built. First of all, it's built in a factory called Tahara Factory, which is about an hour away from Nagoya City. Uh, as you know, Toyota is really all over Nagoya and Aichi Prefecture, uh, but Tahara is one of the oldest factories, and therefore it's a bit far away from everywhere else. Thankfully, I have been to Tahara Factory maybe seven or eight times, and every time I go there, I'm literally in tears because I see these guys working so hard because many of the workers there are what we call the Takumi uh, members. They are people with 35, sometimes even 40 years of experience working, and they are very meticulously producing not just the um, Forerunner, but you will also find most of the Lexus model produced there, including Lexus GX, which is a system model to the Forerunner. Uh, surprisingly, in case you didn't know, Lexus LX is not produced in Tahara, along with Land Cruiser. They're both produced in another factory called Yoshiwara, uh, which is not part of the mainstream for Toyota. But coming back to the factory where Toyota 4Runner is produced, the reason why it is so well built is one, as I mentioned to you, the people who are producing this have 25, 30, 35 years of experience. And also the Forerunner has been around for decades now. And therefore all the bugs have been taken out and ironed out years ago. In addition, because the Forerunner design is old, it also means that it uses some traditional parts and method to produce this vehicle. For example, these are almost all metal, steel components and panels. There are almost no aluminum in the Forerunner. And even though that means the Forerunner is heavy and somewhat cumbersome, it kind of gives you that truck feel, kind of heavy duty feel because everything is thicker in terms of steel panels and also the uh, steel themselves have a different characteristic from modern manufacturing where many of the panels are aluminum. Uh, so let me come back to the manufacturing method. How does it actually work? Well, very first step in the Toyota production for the Forerunner, or any other model for that matter, starts with a stamping shop. Stamping shop is basically the beginning of the whole process. And basically what happens is that they have a, a roll of steel that gets uncoiled and then a machine will stamp out the pieces. So the simplest way to think about that is like uh, making a cookie basically. You have your cookie dough and you have a cookie cutter that will cut into the shape and form into a shape and that is called a stamping shop. So what happens in tire factory is that this heavy duty steel comes off, roll of steel that looks like uh, toilet paper for argument's sake and then they are fed into a heavy duty megaton stamping equipment. This stamping equipment takes years to get it right because there's a mold that shapes each of these parts into what you see right here. And because Forerunner does not have complicated body lines, it is uh, not too difficult to get the panels alignment and panels done correctly compared to newer models from Toyota that has complex body lines and they have a hard time getting it just perfect. So there's a big advantage in having simple body lines. So after the stamping shop, then we go into what we call the body shop or welding department. And in that department, these metal parts are welded together. Uh, most of you guys know I'm an automotive engineer by background and I worked in stamping, body shop, paint shop and assembly. So I do know Toyota production inside out because I was there working inside this factory. But what's really interesting about the Forerunner in particular is that, once again, these metal parts, which are thicker than normal, are welded into pieces. So if I open the door, for example, you have the outer panel, this is one single sheet. You have the inner panel, which is another sheet. And you'll see um, a series of welding that happens along the door. Now, some models, especially newer models, are actually glued together, and they actually uh, use adhesive to glue them. But in the case of Forerunner, because it's using traditional older design, it is spot welded. Spot welding basically uses high amperage and high voltage to melt the steel pieces together using pressure. It is the strongest way to hold the panels together. So all these panels are all welded. You can see the welding spots right here. There's one, two, three, four. 
just over here, but there's also hundreds of welding spots that brings all the parts together. Now, of course, in addition to the outer panel and the inner panel inside, there's reinforcements for, for crash protection. So it's not just two piece. This door will have at least 10 to 15 pieces in there. So that's basically how the welding parts come together. So you have a welded parts for the door, front and back. And then this piece is called a side panel. And this is one single large piece that goes all the way to the beginning of this SUV. Uh, but you can tell when you look at the panel alignment here, it's almost perfect. And there's no misalignment and there's no inconsistency in terms of panel themselves or the paint. And that's because these Takumi members are polishing the metals at the end, uh, which might surprise you. But yes, these people are still manually polishing and finishing the surface of the metals toward the end of the body shop or welding department. That's how they get the perfectly smooth line. And unless you have years of experience doing this, you just cannot get that right. In the case of a Tahara factory, where many of these veterans work, they know exactly what to do with the metal finishing to get it right, because the Forerunner is built to more or less the same standard as the Lexus models that are produced over there. And that's why when you look at the paint job on the Forerunner, uh, or the way that the body lines come together, it looks so perfect. Going back to the back here, these components are built in the manufacturing processes after the body shop, so I'll come back to those in a second. Uh, but even here, heavy metal, it's not aluminum. Pretty well everything is steel for Forerunner. So when you bring all the steel panels together, you weld them together, and they're brought together using precision equipment, you obviously end up with a very strong body. And that's one of the reasons why the Forerunner feels so different. Not to mention the fact that this is body on frame. So frame and the body are separate. And that always gives you an extra sense of rigidness and toughness that is often absent in the current new crossovers. So that was the explanation for how the body comes together in the form of a body shop. What about the paint itself? Well, the painting shop at the tire factory is also a little bit different from other shops. Once again, because it's not as modern, and it's more traditional in approach, that means you get a little bit thicker paint than normal. What is happening with a newer factory is that they're trying to reduce the cost as much as possible. So they try to make the paint as thin as possible for newer models. It doesn't give as much of a depth. You can tell when you look at the paint job on the Forerunner that uh, it is a quite a different feel. Now, most of us who are involved in you know, operations and manufacturing can actually feel the corner of the body and estimate the thickness of the paint. But in the case of Forerunner, it's about 125 to 150 microns. And therefore, it's about 10% thicker than most of what you find out there. Uh, because of the fact that the paint is applied in a traditional fashion, and uh, even though it's a bit more wasted, well, the consumer gets, uh, gets lucky because the paint job is thicker. As well, because the exact same paint shop is used between the Forerunner and the Lexus GX and almost every other Lexus models, the Toyota Forerunner owners are benefiting from a paint shop that is designed for Lexus model, and that's why it's so good. It's very consistent. The gloss is uh, plentiful, the orange peel is minimal, and you can see everything matches all the way across, even for this magnetic gray paint, which is often difficult to match because it's a darker gray. In a paint shop, just to summarize, it goes through a number of different processes, including what we call EDP, which is electro deposition paint, and that process basically removes all the contaminants and apply what you might call uh, undercoating. Interesting enough, they do charge the body and the paint opposite so one is positive one is negative and they attract each other and that's why the paint sticks to the body when they go through the whole system there's a bit of art and science mixed together when it comes to paint shop and so therefore it's not easy to get the paint job done just right but as you can tell in the forerunner uh, every single forerunner for that matter the paint job is almost perfect what about after the paint job well that's when things get more interesting because that is when all of the other components comes together Everything from the engine, the transmission, the wheels, the tires, the inner components such as seats, the headliners, the stereo, everything gets assembled after the paint shop in what we call the assembly line or sometimes general assembly line. And that process is perhaps the most uh, complex and the uh, most difficult to get it right because if you were to see any kind of defects such as uh, rattles and squeak, well, that's where it originates from. So getting the assembly work done correctly is the most difficult part. And thankfully, or maybe not thankfully, 
because the Forerunner is old and traditional and it haven't changed for years. And so are these parts. They're all old and haven't changed. And therefore the suppliers who provides everything from the mirrors to the running boards to the wheels and tires or these moldings have been designing and building them for a very long time. And therefore there's almost zero defect because they got everything figured out over the course of the last uh, decade or so. And so the parts like headlight, all these bumper chrome accents are all installed during the final assembly process. And because suppliers had many years to produce these things, you just don't find defects and they're done almost perfectly. As well, the suppliers for the foreigners are also the suppliers for the Lexus models in the same factory. So once again, you are getting a Lexus level suppliers building components and parts for the Forerunner, which is why everything fits perfectly. If you go into the inside of the Forerunner, you'll continue to see the sign of a really good uh, design and component from years ago. And what I mean by that is that in the old days, things were less uh, complicated. So the parts were big, uh, thick, and simply snapped on with a really good fasteners. Nowadays, they're trying to reduce the cost. They're trying to reduce the weight. So the fasteners, the thickness of the parts, the thickness of the plastic have all been thinned out and they're using lighter and lighter materials. And that is obviously good for business because the cost is lower and everything is lighter in order to increase fuel efficiency, but it does feel a little bit cheaper. And that's why when people drive the Forerunner or Lexus GX, they always say, Hey, it feels very different. It feels heavy. It feels a little bit stronger, tougher, more rigid. Uh, and it feels like it's put together uh, with a specialist or with, in this case, Takumi members, which is exactly what's happening. So these parts are nice and thick, very robust. Uh, and uh, you don't hear squeaks and rattles because they have been produced for a long time, but also because the parts themselves are actually thicker and stronger. Finally, when all the parts and components are placed together and finished in the um, vehicle, well, that's not the end of production because the whole thing goes through a number of inspection and testing and evaluation. Uh, there is testing for running the engine. There's tests for waterproofing or water leak. They actually pour showers of water above and make sure nothing leaks into the car. And then the actual quality inspectors go through and checks the paint job, the surface of the paint, checks for part fit and they go through every single items very carefully and of course in the new modern factory they do that as well but the difference is that the Takumi members who's got the 25 30 35 years experience are the one that's checking the forerunners along with other Lexus models whereas in newer factories well people might have five or ten years experience uh, or maybe they uh, switch jobs and therefore you don't have as much experience but at Tahara factory I don't think I know anyone who actually left the production there, which means pretty well everyone that touches the car or truck have been working there for years and therefore they know exactly what to inspect and how to fix it if there is a problem. So this final inspection done, done by the Takumi members who really can recognize issues are the key to the final success of the foreigner uh, because at the end, nothing passes through these folks onto the consumers. So there is zero defect when it's finished off in the manufacturing and goes to dealership. And that's why there are zero defect when you buy them and when you start to drive them. In fact, the Forerunner is perhaps the best manufactured product in the world. And all the different surveys from Consumer Report or JD Powers proves that, but you don't need those surveys to tell you that this is the best manufactured vehicle in the world. Because when I'm driving this, there's absolutely nothing that seems to go wrong. There's no rattles, there's no squeaks. Everything feels solid and nice and tight and the vehicle feels like it's been put together with a Lexus touch which is a case because once again this is the only model that's produced in a Lexus factory that is sold in North America as a Toyota brand. So those are some of the things to keep in mind and that's why the Forerunner is such an amazing vehicle. I'm quite sure that the new generation Forerunner which will come out in let's say early 2024 which is the sixth generation one will continue to be built in Tara factory. I really hope so because that's an important factory to consider. Uh, so I think the good quality will carry on to a new generation. But of course, when a new model comes out, then you have uh, early teething issues 
with new product introductions. So who knows if the 2024 Forerunner will be as well built as the current model. That's something that we'll have to wait and see. I hope you liked my video and explanation of why the Forerunner is so well built and the basic process for it. I do hope to take some of you guys to Tara Factory in Japan because I plan to go there a little bit later in the year. And then when you see the factory, you'll know that it's a very simple traditional factory with amazing people working there. If you liked my videos, if you can give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. Maybe let me know what you think of the video by putting some comments. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. That'd be truly appreciated. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.